Hi, my name is Jack Freudenheim, and besides playing in the band 46 Bliss, a few years ago I wrote a piece of music software called Sounder that gives you a visual environment within which you can create uh, self-generating music, sometimes called generative music. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Sounder to uh, generate music within the Ableton Live environment. Um, this is the program Sounder. It's available at sounder.com. And the first thing I need to tell you is that in order for it to send MIDI messages over to Ableton Live, you need uh, a third-party utility to uh, take the, the MIDI messages coming out of Sounder and going into, into Live. The one that I use is called MIDI Yoke. You can get it from midiox.com. Uh, it's free or $12 for a commercial license. So what we're going to do is uh, open up a Sounder window. It's called a Sound Space. And uh, choose a um, output, which is a MIDI yoke device number one. And it's going to be going to MIDI channel one. Then you launch a Sounder object within there. And uh, this is going to be what triggers the MIDI. Whenever this object collides with one of the walls of the, uh, of the space that it's enclosed in, it's going to send out a MIDI note. And you see here in this properties window, the MIDI notes it's going to trigger. So we'll jump over to live and uh, go into the texture section. And uh, I'm fond of this mellow voter. Bring this over here and uh, send the audio over to, to the recording that I'm doing. And uh, take the MIDI out of the MIDI yoke one, channel one. And now if we jump back to Sounder, you see whenever this object collides with one of the walls, it's going to send out a, a note through, through Ableton. And there's some randomization you can turn on within here. You can say every time it uh, plays, it should be plus or minus one octave from the central octave that it's choosing. Now let's open a second one. By default, it's on MIDI channel 2. Create an object in there. Change what it looks like for, to be a cube so we can tell the two apart. And um, now let's come back over to live. I'll choose the space choir here. And let's tell that to come in through MIDI channel 2. Audio. There we go. Now they're both running at the same time. And that's sounding pretty cool. Let's say we wanted to put a, put a beat underneath this. I'm going to um, go over into the beats section and uh, bring in brain tease. Okay, and then at the same time, I'm going to bring a couple other beats into different scenes underneath. And I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, let's say we add a bass. Just drag these over. Once again, I'll take three variations. And we'll play these together. Okay, now we've got that going. And uh, the next thing I want to show you, another way to use Sounder, is that we're going to use the MIDI mapping feature of Live and have Sounder trigger which scene it gets triggered in Live. So the way to do that is we're going to open up another window here. We're going to send it to the second MIDI yoke on channel one. and um, launch an object inside there. 
I'm going to use a rune rock for that. And now coming back over here, I'm going to go into the MIDI Learn uh, mapping feature and tell it to wait. And when this rune hits the wall, we get the mapping. Let's go now to the second one. When our rune gets over to this wall, I'm going to drag it along to speed things up. Okay, and when we get to the third one, we got our third note. Now, tell this guy to speed it up a little bit by throwing it a little faster. Kind of taxing my computer here. I've got screen capture software going at the same time as the recording of the video. But what it's doing now is when each time that the this rune is touching one of the walls, it's going to be changing what, what scene it's playing over here in Ableton Live. So there you go. We've generated something fairly cool sounding. I hope what you generate with it will be even cooler. I hope that you like it and thanks a lot.